The question was, what is pain? So I have to limit that question to a certain very specific pain. And that's the type of pain that I experienced and experience, and I think that many, many, many peace builders experience at the outset, at the beginning, and perhaps even in the continuation of the journey. And that's the pain of leaving behind uh, the sense that my story is the only story. One day about five and a half years ago, which means we're talking about uh, the middle of 2013 probably, I was driving in my car here in the area in which I live, of uh, the West Bank, Judean Samaria, Gush Etzion, whatever you want to call it, occupied territory, liberated territory, greater Israel, Palestine, driving my car with two Protestant pastors from the U.S. And they were my friends, they were my guests, they wanted me to show them the flourishing of Jewish settlement here after 2,000 years of exile. They wanted to see how the prophecies of the Bible are coming true. The Jewish people, the sons and daughters of the land are coming back and making it bloom. So we're driving around, I'm showing them forests and settlements and what we built here, picked up a hitchhiker as we're driving, picked up another one. When the second hitchhiker got out of the car, one of the pastors, his name was Bob Roberts from Texas, Bob turns to me in this big Texas grin, jolly laugh, Hanan, you're such a great guy. You picked up hitchhikers. Wow, what an example back in Texas where I come from. He said, no one does that. So I said to him, Bob, look, it's not just me. Round two, we all pick up hitchhikers. We have a common vision. We trust each other just like everyone else. I do my very best to pick up every person who puts out his finger for a ride. And somehow at that moment, I realized that I was lying. I was lying to Bob, but even worse, I was lying to myself. And what bothered me at that moment was not the fact that I don't pick up Palestinians. What bothered me was the fact that I hadn't realized until that moment that I don't pick up Palestinians. And I suddenly saw that there's something that I don't see. That was like a moment of, of revelation. Because I remember I said to Bob in the car, Bob, wow, there's something wrong with me. And I realized that I was completely blind. I was, I was embarrassed. I felt that humiliated myself. That I said I pick up every, every person, which means either that I didn't see the Palestinians or I didn't see them as people. And that's against everything I believe, that, that I'm dehumanizing. So I felt called to, uh, to change that. So, okay, so how do you begin to see people that you don't see? <laughs> That's like, <laughs> how do you do that? Over Facebook, uh, I got word of a Protestant pastor in Reston, Virginia, the other side of the ocean. He said he has this Christian ministry. He comes to the Holy Land twice a year, meets Israelis, meets Palestinians, and he introduces them to each other. And he gave me instructions, wrote them out, where and when to go to meet Palestinians. And I get to this piece of Palestinian farmland. I've never been on a piece of Palestinian land in my life. I walk in the gate and I see inside something that can't be. I see a miracle. I see 15 Israelis and 15 Palestinians and they are talking to each other. Jamal, we shake hands, we talk. Jamal first said that he lives in Beit Umar, a Palestinian village about six minutes from my house by car. He said, Hanan, I, I know you know this, just want to make sure that the kids in Beit Umar are five years old, ten years old, when they see someone who looks like you, Jamal said, they start to cry. I had no idea what he was talking about. I said, Jamal, why? And he did not understand why I did not understand. As if everyone looks at Hanan, starts to cry. <laughs> why? So finally, he, out of frustration, he says, Hanan, it's the kippah on your head. And it's the beard. And it's the seat seat hanging from your pants because all the people look like you. They carry submachine guns and he does like this and they kill the kids in Beit Umar. And I see an image of my neighbors walking in the fields while my neighbors carry guns. So I said, ah, that's why they're afraid of the guns. So I, 
finally said to Jamal, well, Jamal, what do you want? We carry guns because we're afraid of you. And he was so offended. He said, what are you talking about? You're not afraid of us. We're afraid of you. There is a, a line in the Passover celebration that we Jews celebrate every year. And in English translation, it says, in every generation, they come to annihilate us. And uh, here in Israel, that line has uh, been set to music in four or five different versions. It's on the radio before the Passover holiday for the month before. Everyone's singing it. The kids learned it in kindergarten. Everyone's singing, they, the nations of the world are coming to annihilate us, but we survive. And I began to realize, as a result of my connection to Palestinians, that we are perpetuating a sense of victimhood that creates reality in which we always see that they're coming to destroy us. By living in that narrative of victimhood, we're ensuring that we'll never go beyond that reality. We'll always see enemies. Because I think most people think that for identity to be meaningful, it has to be exclusive that I'm right and you're wrong. I exist and you don't exist. My story is true and your story is false. And to say that my story is true, but his story is also true, to many Israelis and Palestinians, it sounds like you're saying my story is false and only his story is true. There's a concept in Jewish thought uh, that's called abundant peace. Not just peace, but abundant peace. In Hebrew, Rav Shalom. Abundant peace means being able to hold together all of the conflicting truths. It means that you're creating a larger whole. By the way, the word whole and the word peace in Hebrew are the same word. A whole that's just like uh, light, in which white light is made up of many, many different refracted colors. And you get the whole only from the bring together and the acceptance of all the different hues, all the different parts. So peace building, peacemaking, is about collecting the sparks of conflicting truths, bringing them all together, and creating a situation in which each of them sees the light in the other. That's some vision there. Wow. When are we going to get to that? <laughs>